jumbo shrimp, freezer burn, virtual reality, all obvious oxymorons, but nonprofit drug company? It's true, and it's happening in the Bay Area. Here's the host of the public radio program, The California Report, Scott Schaefer. Rinku is seven years old. She is infected with the parasitic disease Kala Azar. Her father earns less than 50 cents a day and can't afford the $200 for medicine that would save her life. Dr. Victoria Hale is in India to see the devastating effects of Kala Azar for herself. It is a terrible disease to die from. The parasite goes to your liver, spleen, and bone marrow. So you have no white cells, like AIDS. You have no red cells, you have severe anemia. And you have no clotting factors of cells so that you can hemorrhage and die. So there are many ways to die, and often all of those are in place. Victoria Hale loves making medicines. For over a decade, she has held high-powered, high-paying jobs at the center of the pharmaceutical industry. In 2000, she turned her world upside down and quit. It was annoying inside of me that I had to answer. It began with understanding that good drugs, good drugs, uh, don't necessarily get approved. Knowing that only drugs that will make a profit are developed, Victoria Hale did something that no one in America had ever done before. She set up a non-profit drug company. I founded One World Health to develop drugs for diseases that were not in any other pharmaceutical company's portfolio, meaning diseases of people who are very poor in general in the developing world. Her husband, Avi, remembers what that decision meant for him and their children. Victoria has always been a big thinker, and I said to myself, well, if I'm going to change my life and turn it inside out, I might as well turn it inside out for a big idea. After months of soul-searching and hard work applying for grants, Dr. Hale chose Kala Azar for her first project. It is a very compelling uh, disease. It's hard to walk away from. It, does, it doesn't leave your mind, the, the image of it. Spread by sand flies, an estimated one and a half million people are infected with the disease worldwide. Up to 200,000 of them will die this year. Current treatments are expensive and can have lethal side effects. Came with three months fever, okay? An alternative treatment, the antibiotic paramomycin, was thought to be a safe and cheap cure, but clinical trials were needed to prove this. The drug had been abandoned. It had gone 90 percent of the way to being on the market and available for people with the disease. But because it was an older drug and wasn't patent, was no longer patentable, and because it was for a disease of very, very poor, uh, no one would move it forward. Why would a drug company have an opportunity to create a drug and just leave it on the shelf? Pharmaceutical companies make incredible numbers of discoveries. The R&D budgets of large pharmaceutical companies are enormous. And it's that there are too many discoveries that are made. So when you have a choice of a whole field of opportunities, you choose the ones that make the best business arguments. So a pharmaceutical company would make a third version of an erectile dysfunction drug before they would make a malaria drug? There is a much better business argument for developing a drug for erectile dysfunction than for malaria. Using grant money from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, one World Health was able to fund the clinical trials that were necessary. So this is our uh, main ward. The results were an impressive 95% success rate. And you can see from 100 yeah. it has gone down. It's, it's, yeah. it's become ephebrite. Well, Why should someone in California, living the lives we have here, care about Kala Azar? People in California and in the rest of the United States should care very much about all of the diseases in the world because all of those diseases will eventually, can eventually, uh, be shared. We have West Nile virus that we didn't have 10 years ago. Uh, we have SARS that just popped up. Boosted by her success with Kala Azar, Victoria Hale moved on to try to develop an inexpensive cure for malaria. Malaria is the most well-known parasite. It affects a half billion people a year. 
and one million of those people will die from severe malaria or cerebral malaria, the parasite going into your brain. Almost all of them are young children. She believes Berkeley professor Jay Kiesling may have the answer in his natural resources lab. Artemisinin is a cure for malaria. There are people who have had some of the worst forms of malaria, taken artemisinin-based therapies and walked up from their deathbeds. It's really that good, and yet it's too expensive for most people to afford. Jay Kiesling has developed a way to make microbes produce a cheap and reliable supply of the malaria cure. It's absolutely cutting edge. That is the first time in our experience that this high, high technology can be applied to global health. By producing it in microbes, we can produce a lot of the drug and therefore solve the supply problem and at the same time make it less expensive. This is where we do all of the work to engineer the bacteria. How do you coax them along to produce more? We use a lot of neat gene tricks. <laughs> like what? Well, to, from a non-technical point of view, we, we build switches in the bacteria to turn the genes on at specific times. And we build dimmer switches in, in the bacteria to crank up the expression of those genes so that they'll produce more of the chemical that we want. And is there a limit to how much they can produce? Yes, there's certainly a limit because you can only feed them so much sugar. But you have to feed a lot of sugar to the lab assistants. That's to right, keep them going that's right, them. that's right. We pe keep them pumped up on sugar and caffeine. <laughs> That's a great possibility. The only Part of Victoria Hale's monumental task is to convince creative scientists like Jay Kiesling to work with her on a non-profit basis instead of with far wealthier pharmaceutical companies. When you heard of a non-profit pharmaceutical company, what went through your mind? My first thought was that they wouldn't be successful. How could a non-profit ever get a drug out? Um, but it's really a great concept and uh, we are certainly going to do everything we can to help make that a reality. Our challenges uh, are really to remain excellent, to do what it takes to take a project all the way through to benefit people. Uh, that means it's not good enough to do new drug R&D and to take a drug through regulatory approval. It doesn't stop there. You have to get the drug to the people. So Victoria Hale went to Jack Newman, one of Professor Kiesling's former students, who had set up Amaris Biotechnologies. My partners and I, as scientists, think we all share something in common, and that is we've always wanted to make a difference, really, as scientists. The, the thrill of discovery is wonderful, but really being able to see that translate into something that's used in the world, there, there's nothing like it. Dr. Victoria Hale has created a new paradigm for the pharmaceutical industry and is committed to saving millions of lives around the world, including Rinku, who is now completely cured. I love it. It is an incredible opportunity, an incredible profession. Uh, I truly believe medicines are miracles. If you'd like to learn more about One World Health, you can call them at 415-421-4700 or go to their website, oneworldhealth.org. Or you can visit our award-winning website and learn more about lots of issues in California by trying out our interactive features. That's californiaconnected.org.